So how do you tell if two vectors are orthogonal, parallel, or neither? Well, first, let's get a visual representation of what those words mean. When two vectors are parallel, they never intersect. And so the angle between them is zero degrees. Now granted, you can have two vectors, A and B, that go in opposite directions. And so the angle will be 180. In this case, these two vectors, they never intersect as well. They're parallel, but just running in the opposite direction. Now, two vectors are orthogonal if they meet at right angles. So this is vector A and this is vector B. As you can see, the angle between them is a right angle, or 90 degrees, which in radians, that corresponds to pi over 2. So basically, if two vectors are orthogonal, it means that they are perpendicular to each other. Now, anything else, if they're not parallel or if they're not orthogonal, then the two vectors, you can say they're neither parallel nor orthogonal. So any other angle other than 0, 90, or 180, then you'd say neither. Now, let's work on an example using two-dimensional vectors. So let's say we have vector a, which is 3, 5 and vector b, which is 5, negative 3. Go ahead and determine if the two vectors are parallel, orthogonal, or neither. Now, a quick test that we can employ is calculating the slope of each vector. So for vector a, if we take the y component and divide it by the x component, we're going to get 5 over 3. Now, to calculate the slope of vector b, Let's take the y component and divide it by the x component. This is going to be negative 3 over 5. So what do you know about these two slopes? What do you recognize? Notice that these two slopes, they're the negative reciprocals of each other. And whenever you see that, that means that the two lines, or in this case, the two vectors, are perpendicular. Now, the other way to determine that they're perpendicular or orthogonal is to take the dot product. If the dot product is 0, then we know it's orthogonal. So let's see what's going to happen. To calculate the dot product between vectors a and b, we need to multiply the x components together. So that's going to be 3 times 5. And then we need to multiply the y components together. And so that's 5 times negative 3. 3 times 5 is 15. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15, and this adds to 0. So therefore, since the dot product is equal to 0, that tells us that these two vectors are orthogonal, which means that they're perpendicular. Now let's try another example. So let's say that vector a this time is 4, 3, and vector b is 12 comma 9. Are the two vectors parallel, orthogonal, or neither? What would you say? Well, once again, let's analyze the slope of each vector. So for vector a, if we take the y component and divide it by the x component, it's going to be 3 divided by 4. Now let's do the same for vector b. The y component is 9, the x component is 12. Now, we can reduce 9 over 12 if we divide both numbers by 3. And so this will give us 3 over 4. So notice that the slope for vectors a and b are the same. So because of that, these two vectors are parallel, but are they equal? Vector a would probably be about like this long, but vector b would be three times as long compared to vector a. Because if you compare 12 and 4, it's three times as great. And the same is true with 3 and 9. So a and b are parallel, but they're not equal vectors. b is much larger than a. 
In fact, b is simply 3 times the value of a. But by analyzing the slopes, you can quickly tell if two vectors are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Another way in which we can confirm that the two vectors are parallel is by finding the angle between the two vectors. And so there's a formula that we're going to use to do so. So the angle is equal to cosine, or rather arc cosine, of the dot product between a and b divided by the magnitude of vector a times the magnitude of vector b. So first, let's calculate the dot product between a and b. So let's begin by multiplying the x components together. So that's going to be 4 times 12. And then let's multiply the y components. And so that's 3 times 9. Now 4 times 12 is 48, and 3 times 9 is 27. And 40 plus 20 is 60, 8 plus 7 is 15, so that gives us 60 plus 15 is 75. Now, let's focus on calculating the magnitude of vector a. So it's going to be the square root of the square of the x components plus the square of the y component. So 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, so that gives us the square root of 25, which is 5. So now there's only one missing piece of the puzzle that we need, and that is the magnitude for vector b. And so that's going to be the square root of 12 squared plus 9 squared. 12 squared is 144, 9 squared is 81. And 144 plus 81, that's 225. And the square root of 225 is 15. So now, putting this all together, we see that theta is going to be the arc cosine of the dot product between a and b, which is 75, times the magnitude of a, which is 5, times the magnitude of b, which is 15. Now, if we multiply 5 times 15, that's going to give us 75. And 75 divided by itself is 1. So we have the arc cosine of 1. And if you type that in to your scientific device, the arc cosine of 1 is 0. So we get 0 degrees, which means that the two vectors are parallel to each other. The angle between them is the same. So that's another way in which you could show that the two vectors are parallel, is by finding the angle and showing that it's equal to 0 degrees. Now let's try one more example. So let's say that vector a is 5 comma negative 6 and vector b is 3 negative 4. Go ahead and work on that problem. So let's begin by analyzing the slope of each vector. So if we take the y component and divide it by the x component, we'll get the slope negative 6 over 5. And for vector b, it's negative 4 over 3. So looking at these two fractions, would you say that the two vectors are parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Well, because the slopes are not equal, they can't be parallel. And because they're not negative reciprocals of each other, it's not orthogonal. Therefore, the two vectors has to be neither. They're neither parallel nor orthogonal. So let's confirm it. We need to show that the angle between the two vectors is not 0 degrees, nor is it 90 degrees. So let's begin by calculating the dot product. So let's multiply the x components together. So this is going to be 5 times 3. And then let's multiply the y components together. And so we have negative 6 times negative 4. So 5 times 3 is 15. 6 times 4 is 24. So this adds to 39. Now let's calculate the magnitude of vector a. So it's going to be the square root of 5 squared plus negative 6 squared. 
And so this becomes 25 plus 36, which is 61. But the square root is 61. Now let's do the same for vector b. We can see it's based on the 3, 4, 5 triangle, so this is going to turn out to be 5. So now let's calculate the angle using this formula. So theta is going to be the arc cosine of the dot product of a and b times the magnitude of a and the magnitude of b. I mean divided by those values. So the dot product is equal to 39 and the magnitude of a is the square root of 61 and the magnitude of b is 5. So go ahead and plug this in. You may want to put this in parentheses. So let's see what answer we're going to get. So I got a very small number. I got 2.936. Let me make sure my calculator is in degree mode. So I'm going to try that one more time because it might be in radian mode. Nope, it's in degree mode. So that's the answer I got in degrees. Because it's not 0 or 90 degrees, we could say that the two vectors are neither parallel nor orthogonal.